Okay, this is a uh, rocket stove part two. Uh, got some modifications. Kind of excited about some things we did. Uh, come on a little closer here. First of all, I want to show that this is this TEG here. I've got these from you can see I got these from TEG Power. That's the ones that already have the hot and the cold plate on it. This piece here is a uh, is an aluminum rectangle tube. And you can keep it on that. That, ring, that. that aluminum rectangle tube, I don't really have the opportunity to fabricate. So I just cut me a piece of this that was proper length. And these are PEX fittings that I just drilled a hole, put in there. And I just cut pieces of aluminum for the end. And that's JB Weld. I JB welded those ends on and that there. Now the JB Weld says that it can take up to 550 degrees. And my cold side of my TEGs can't get over uh, 300 so I'm in good shape I think we're testing this to see if it'll hold uh, this is the other one that I made and this is the small one that had the copper coming out uh, you can see that we hooked up some LEDs to it my question was why isn't there a uh, a light that sets on the stove that uh, just like the fan and so this is, was, uh, was our first attempt, and I've got some, uh, I think, some exciting uh, designs coming up with this little project here. I think I know how to make this work much better, much more light, much more efficiently. So I'm, I'm going to save that for my next video. You see the fan still running. I'm going to take the fan down here. Set it down. But I'm really happy with that little box. I think it's a nice clean finish. The other thing I like about that rectangle tube is, is that you could cut that rectangle tube as long as you want. So that means you could put as many of them in a row as you wanted to. One of the other things that I had to consider here was the water's coming in here. So I had to consider whether they're splitting off here and running these in parallel or running them in series. I was afraid due to my low volume pump that I wouldn't be able to run in parallel and keep adequate water through both of them. So what I did is the water's coming in through this one, it's coming out here and then running in this one and then back and returning. Of course this unit, being that it's getting warmer water, isn't working as efficiently as this one, but it keeps them both. Now this is for 15 watt and a 15 watt, so 30 watts, and this one's rated at 30 watts. And this one is rated at somewhere around 10 if the temperature difference is correct. And surprisingly, this copper stays pretty cool and we just put these long pieces on here and there's water in there and the heat will come up and come away from that and so those little lights just stay burning uh, we haven't burned them out uh, as of yet so uh, that's the update on that I think that the aluminum works really well that aluminum pipe works really well to do that <clears throat> okay uh, point of interest number two back up so you see me uh, we got us some batteries here. These are reconditioned batteries, or you know, these were sold to a battery scrapyard. It's junk, and they charge them low and slow. And uh, when you get them to holding 6.2, 6.3 volts, you know you're solid. And uh, so we bought these. For, actually, these are Trojans. They're 360 amp hours a piece. We got these for uh, 60 bucks a piece. So that's just 120 dollars worth of the batteries there, and it's 360 amp hours. So uh, that works pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to check the voltage on here just real quick, see what we got here. We've been running some stuff. And I'm still running 1238, 1239, which is exactly what we've been running. So let me show you what else we're running off of this. So we changed, we got rid of the water pump. This is my water reservoir now. Give me the temperature gauge, Mike, will you? This is our water reservoir now, and uh, <clears throat> this is our solar pump. This is a 5 watt solar pump. So we just took uh, some epoxy, two part epoxy, and, and epoxy the brass fitting into this bucket. Inline pump, 5 watts. It's actually running off the battery. So in our last video, we was running AC to run our pump. In this video, we're running DC off of our battery and off our charge controller to circulate our water. Uh, back out a little. Interesting enough is, is uh, this water temperature right now is shooting at 106 degrees. 
So what happens is, is it runs through the TEGs, and after it runs through the TEGs, it runs through our box, which we have on one of our videos called, uh, I think, TEG Upgrades and Add-ons. And so this is our box from uh, Upgrades and Add-ons. And so when the water returns, before it hits the bucket, <clears throat> we've got the 12-volt fan. I don't know if you can hear it. Hear it running back there. The 12-volt fan is running behind this. The water is returning from the TEGs, passing through this radiator. And uh, we're getting 110-degree air off of it. Because, and it's a little bit warmer than the water because it's losing a little temperature here. So, we also put a switch here, which could be on a thermostat. So when this water hits a temperature that we want to heat the rest of the house with, the thermostat would kick on, the fan kicks on, and this could be in any location of the house that we wanted. So you see that the, our TEGs is actually pushing uh, our water now. It's actually running the fan here to uh, push this and pumping this through the system. So this is a, I don't know, um, perhaps a viable uh, heating solution. This is a one way to get heat into another location of the house uh, while making power to do it. <laughs> I don't know, uh, I don't, I haven't, I'm not sure, really sure what the downside is yet. Um, everything seems to be working good. I did, uh, I did blow up my inverter. <clears throat> I uh, smoked that. I'm going to have to uh, go back and, uh, and get another one. Uh, what I've done too as well is this switch here turns on the pump. So I, uh, I start the stove, get a, get a shot of the stove burning. Let me show you this handle here we put on the stove. To make this uh, chamber, how fast you draw here determines on how big this is. You know, if you scoop this back, it doesn't draw as rapid of air. Uh, if you scoot it forward, that air really picks up and uh, brings over that fire and makes that fire run a lot better. So we just built that little thing to, to, uh, to adjust that, <clears throat> be able to uh, adjust the uh, all the air that's coming to our fire. Right now our barrel on the side here, I'm running 283 degrees on the side. I'm running 365 on the outer edge. I'm running over 500 dead center. Uh, however, on my aluminum here, which is would be my water, I'm running at 123. So, uh, Staying within, my tolerance is pretty good. Back plate of this one is uh, 235 degrees. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you got any questions, uh, got any comments, please leave them below. Uh, we're going to continue showing different configurations with this. Uh, we're not. Uh, we're doing it for our own benefit, uh, as well as everybody else's. We, we want to know how this thing works, and what what we can do off of it. So we're going to continue to experiment with it. Now I've got some good experiments coming with the lights here. You just you wait and give me a little, give, give me a little bit here, and I'll uh, I'm going to come back with a better light than that. Okay. Thanks for watching.